the last video, we put the, added, put the fuse wire on our sample, and then we closed up the bomb here. Now, for the bomb calorimetry to work well, you need your sample to burn completely. So to encourage that to happen, we fill the bomb with pure oxygen to a high pressure. We're actually going to end up charging the bomb to 26 atmospheres of oxygen. So we do that with a high pressure gas cylinder that contains oxygen instead of nitrogen as we used earlier in the semester. The small dial here indicates the total pressure in the tank at the moment, and it's a little less than 1,500 PSI. This big gauge is going to tell us the atmospheres of oxygen we put in here. We're going to go to about 26. We use this valve to turn the oxygen on. Here a little bit come out there. This is the connector to the bomb. On the bomb, you will see there's this little thing that sticks up with a little hole in it. This piece has two O-rings in it, one that seals above the hole and one that seals below the hole, so that you can just slide this on, and now any gas we put in will go in that hole. Now, if that were all that were there, it would come right back out. But there's a valve in there, just like the valves on your car tire or bicycle tire stems, that are a one-way valve, so the gas can only go in. If it tries to come back out, it seals the valve shut. This screw top right here is the release valve. Now, before you start this process initially, you do want to make sure this is open. Don't unscrew it too far, it'll screw all the way out. We don't want to do that. Then you can put slide this on. Make sure you slide it down so the second one will be sealed. And then you just gently turn this on. And if things are set up right, you'll hear and get gas coming out here. And if you turn it up so that it's reading about four to five atmospheres, that's a good flow. Now I have to talk at you for a minute and tell you more about this because this has to run for about a minute. So I'm watching the clock and we let, we're purging it to get all the other gases out and then we'll fill it to high pressure so we really have a large percentage of oxygen way over 99% pure oxygen. Now, as I said before, it's really important not to do this wrong. If you put too much pressure in here, the bomb could rupture, and that could injure you, or it might rupture when you set off the reaction, which is going to increase the pressure some, too. So you got to be careful not to do that. So what I'm going to ask is that although I'm demonstrating this to you, the first time you fill the bomb during class, you make sure I'm watching you. Because it's easy to get a little bit confused about what you should do. So it's been blowing here for about 35 seconds. Since this is just a demonstration, I'm actually going to stop. And what you do is you can close this valve and the pressure will start to go up. Before you start to close this valve, you need to get ready on this valve because what you'll do is push this one down when you reach the desired pressure. So if you watch when I close this, the pressure will start to go up. And we'll let it rise to about 26. When you get there, you release that and then you shut this valve. Now, you're not done because the protocol is to do this twice. So then you just open this up. And, let the pr and release the pressure. While that's going on, you can close this valve. Then you can open this one again and start the purge. And again, if you get about four to five PS, um, atmosphere showing on this gauge while this is open, the pressure rises at a reasonable rate and it's easy to shut things off. 
So this cell we won't have to release again. We'll just flip the valve when we get to 26 psi, or atmospheres, excuse me. Shut that off. That makes, that's shut. Don't hear anything leaky. And then you can just slide that off. Now that I properly filled Bob for doing the experiment, the next video will show you how to get it mounted in the calorimeter.